In this tutorial, we'll look at how to create a field of view indicator for the Schulman telescope that will allow you to select guide stars and specify the three parameters that are necessary, right ascension, declination, and the position angle of the camera to accommodate the guide star. So the best way that I found to do this is to use a freely available tool that everyone can have access to, and that's this Aladdin Sky Atlas, which is used by professional astronomers for visualization of uh, catalogs or star charts and things like that. So the easiest way, if you don't want to try to remember the address, is to type the Aladdin Sky Atlas in Google. Press Enter. And you'll get the listing it's as a first thing for the Sky Atlas. And when you come to this page, you'll notice there are a couple of ways of doing it. You can either download the application physically to your computer, to your machine. Alternatively, you can run it as a Java application through your browser, which is the method by which I'm going to use. So it asks permission, and there it goes. So you're presented with the screen that you know allows you to access all of the various utilities, the functions of the Sky Atlas. But ultimately, all you need to do is type in a coordinate here for the location or an object name. Of course, this has a name resolver. So why don't we pick something common? Uh, the most common thing I can think of is M51. And then hit enter and it figures out M51, the position on the sky, and it loads a picture. Now if it didn't load a picture for you, then you can always press the all sky optical here and it will load this color picture of the galaxy. So these are various uh, surveys that you could use, the digitized sky survey, the colored version, um, or this all sky optical image, and those will give you uh, some color images which are kinda nice. Now, as far as the functionality of this tool, before we load our field of view indicator, let me indicate that if you roll your cursor, or your, at least your mouse wheel, sorry, roll your mouse wheel in and out, you can zoom in and out, so that part's easy. This select tool I'll show you in a moment, but on the right you'll find there are some tools. You can manually do the zooming in and out by clicking with squares, either inward or outward. But the pan tool is what allows you to grab by left clicking on the screen and moving it around. So we know our target is M51 and we're happy with that. Now uh, we'll load our field of view indicator. And one of the interesting things I was able to do is contact this group and have them put it in uh, on their server, put it into the program so that I don't have to give you a file. You'll just use their program here to load it. So you go under File and Load Instrument Fields of View and it'll give you uh, another window which lists various fields of view indicators for many many different kinds of instruments including the Hubble Space Telescope, Subaru and uh, others. But alongside this list of big professional telescopes you'll find the Schulman Telescope which is kinda cool. So click on the Schulman 32 inch telescope and then you hit submit. When you do that, you'll notice it turns red here because you're looking through this field of view indicator, which I'll zoom out and show you. I'm going to close this window. I don't need it open now. So let's zoom out, and you can see the field of view indicator for the Schulman telescope and an STX uh, CCD camera, the SBIG camera. So the large square here represents our field of view. Anything that's in there will be in our picture. And then the smaller rectangle is what represents the guide ship. So we need a guide star on the guide ship. You can load other catalogs here. Uh, for example, you could go into the catalog database in a moment, not at the moment, but and then you can load one that is the star catalog. So you could figure out the magnitudes of these stars. For our purposes, all we really need to do is find a star that's reasonably bright and when I say that any star here that shows a little bit of this diffraction pattern is certainly going to be bright enough. So this star has a tiny little plus there that means that it could potentially be a good guide star. 
And anything that is between these two arcs, which is uh, the circles here, this annulus, is a potentially good guide star when we are centered on our object. So I see a guide star there. And by the way, I would probably guess that something of that magnitude is around 11th magnitude. Uh, but looking around the circle, that's it. I mean, it's that, or we have to not only rotate this, but maybe even translate it, which we might consider in a moment with another object. But let's say that this was going to be the guide star that we would choose. So how you're going to rotate the field of view indicator, there is actually a manual way of rotating, but I'd like to show you the numeric way of doing it because you're going to need these numbers anyway. So over on the right, you'll see that there are planes that are uh, created every time you put a new image here. So it's like a stack of images of the various things that you have either displayed or open. You can turn them off and on. It's very similar to the logic like in Photoshop. And the upper plane here is what is the, the field of view indicator. Actually, we can go like that, center on our target. And we can look at the properties of just the uh, field of view indicator by right clicking on that plane and you'll get a listing and I apologize this listing it says various things one of the ones at the bottom that's just off the off the screen there says properties so I click on properties and you'll come up with this window and the properties of the field of view are its center especially what we're interested in its rotational center as well as what they call the roll angle which uh, is synonymous with position angle. So the position angle right now is zero. North is up. It's interesting that with this particular camera the guide chip is over on the side with north being up but that is the correct orientation. So if I want to accommodate this guide star right here I need to rotate with a positive uh, angle to make my guide chip be in this position to accommodate this guide star. So my first guess would be around 15 degrees of rotation. So you would put 15 here, hit apply, and ah, it rotates. Wonderful. And in fact, I may have even over rotated a little, so maybe I put 13 degrees and hit apply. And in this way, we now have uh, a guide star that will be um, good enough for us to guide on to have our object in the center and be able to take advantage of the Schulman telescope. So that wasn't too difficult. Now what you need to do is then take these values again in this window from this window here, which stays active. You can always just bring it up again. Um, all you need to do is write down or copy and paste the coordinates for right ascension and declination. These are J2000 coordinates as well as the position angle. Those are the three values you need to know. Now what I'd like to do is continue by showing you one more example and in this next example we'll need to not only rotate the field of view but we'll need to translate the field of view indicator as well. So let me demonstrate that. I'm going to remove these planes here because uh, we're going to try a new object so if you right click you can delete all planes and then we'll load a, another object here, something different. Uh, something that I've worked on recently was NGC 2798 and again we can just hit enter these are a pair of interacting galaxies so we will load that field of view indicator again submit close and there it is and this time I'm gonna pan and we will look within this annulus just looking around and these stars I don't see that little plus they're dimmer than 11th magnitude while they could be usable they're not great now I see a star here Notice how it is just outside of the annulus. 
So it would require us to rotate the field of unicator to get the guide chip over here as well as translate the entire thing so that we could get it there. Now that will make our object no longer be in the center of the field, but the object is small. And in terms of composition, that's okay. So I also note that there's a bright star here uh, that we could also shift things around to maybe use. But this one down here seems like it's a little bit better since it might be a little bit closer here and of comparable brightness. Uh, that's okay, but the one on the bottom is brighter. And I think that's it. These are you know, potentially okay, but again, this one down here seems like it's the brightest of all the stars that is closest and would be the best for our guiding purposes. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take care of the rotation to get our chip over here. So I would estimate that we have to go 90 degrees and then plus a little bit more to get to here. So I'm going to say that's about 30 degrees. So we'll click and I'll load the properties. And I'm going to try 130 degrees. See what happens. Oh. I didn't do my math right. So it looks like I've got to subtract a solid 10. Let's make it 117. That went a little too far. That looks good. Now I've got it lined up in rotation, but what we need to do is shift this whole field of view indicator. As you uh, press the select button and roll your cursor across the screen, you'll see there's nothing to select here. But when you put your cursor on a line, a little hand comes up. And that hand indicates that you can now translate this field of view indicator. Remember, be sure that you have your plane selected here. That That is uh, what we're operating on. It's the plane that we're in. So I'll grab it, and you can see I can now move this around. It keeps the same orientation, position angle, but we can translate it. Also note that when you do press and you have selected it properly, there's a four green dots that show up right there in the middle. So that's another indication that things are going well. So we would center our guide star like this. And now this value here for the rotational center, that is the center not of where the target is. That's not the coordinates of the galaxies. It's the coordinates of the center of the field of view. And those are the numbers that we need. Because that's what tells us how to get this guide star on the guide ship. We need these coordinates, right ascension and declination as well as the position angle. So write those down and then you would be ready to rock and roll to take a picture of these interacting galaxies. Later in a subsequent tutorial uh, I can show you what to do with these three values if you wanted to create the script for ACP all on your own. Alternatively if you just wanted to email me these three values, right ascension declination of the center of the field as well as the position angle, I can create the, the script for you. And in that way I'll put all the other parameters as far as autofocus and everything else that's necessary uh, to get the system to acquire high quality images of your object. So thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoy creating uh, the field of view indicators and subsequently deriving these values for the Schulman Telescope.